So the 993rd episode of SmackDown Live started when The New Day came out to celebrate their fifth time becoming tag team champions. And I will tell you, for me at least, the party did not begin until there was that one question asked. Now can you dig it, sucker? That's when King Booker came out. And he went on to knight Lord Xavier Woods and Sir Kofi Kingston. But for Big E, he said, no, Big E, you don't need a certain, a name or whatever, a, a title, a title like all of them. And Big E got mad and then things started to get hot. But then Booker T was like, there's room for all four of us to be five time champions. <sighs> <laughs> I did the spin and you just couldn't see it because <laughs> the camera was too high. So the first match of the night is a triple threat tag team match with The Bar taking on The Good Brothers and Epico and Primo. And this match was kind of back and forth throughout the whole match. The weird thing about this though, at the beginning we were worried that The New Day and the three man <laughs> commentary team they already have was gonna equal six people talking all at once, but the New Day seemed to have their own thing, and hopefully WWE put it up somewhere, and I'll try to find it, and you will see a card flash if it, they did, which they better have. Otherwise, their production value is equal to the Raw Loaf's production value. Maybe not so such a good job at calling match, but they were throwing pancakes, and that's probably equally as good. <laughs> so this match is back and forth between all three teams. They are all going at it pretty hard. But in the end, a double backcracker from Epico and Primo to Lou Gallows and who? Those ever opportunistic bar buddies. Uh, Cesaro tags himself in, gets in there, uppercuts, and gets the pin on Lou Gallows for the one, two, three. So they'll be moving on to take the winners of next week's triple threat tag team match. Do the Bludgeon Brothers not get a rematch now? And in the next backstage segment, Paige lets us know who's in that triple threat tag team match. One of the teams is right there, Lana and Rusev. Or not Lana. <laughs> I say that because Lana basically does everything Rusev does, maybe. But it's actually Aiden English and Rusev. And Rusev goes in to kiss Lana because he's all like, Thanks, honey. Okay, I don't ever come to me for impressions. He goes in to kiss Lana, but Lana's like, I didn't do it. It was seems to be on track with everything right now. Ain't in English. It makes it a great Rusev day. Jeff Hardy ends up in the ring and he tells us how he's alive and broken and he's never felt more alive and broke or rebroken at the same time, which is kind of, ooh, I don't want to know what that feels like. But then Randy Orton answers the call to Jeff Hardy, comes out and goes, not on your terms, Jeff Hardy. He's not gonna go down to the ring and mess with him right now. And Jeff goes, that's fine. All right, we're gonna meet at Hell in a Cell in three weeks in Hell in a Cell, not at Hell in a Cell. And Jeff Hardy, he's been flying around for the last couple decades. How much more is he gonna fly at Hell in a Cell? So Carmella's in the back getting ready for her match. Renee comes up with a microphone and Carmella just goes, you know what, it's all about me. I've made this division all about me. And then she leaves. And Renee Young is like, the look on her face is like pure disgust. Like Carmella didn't look at Renee in the face and go, you fat cow, how dare you? You probably like to steal from black people and then you probably want to shoot cops in the face, you hooker. Like, Carmella didn't get anywhere near like that. But Renee looked more disgusted than Linda McMahon probably did when Stacy Keebler got on that desk for Vince McMahon. And then we had another sighting of the truth. Our truth comes and he's looking for Carmella for a title match. And Ty comes in again, Ty Dillinger tries to talk some sense into truth. Our truth is like, oh, what? And he walks off and Ty goes, this is my life now. 
or something like that. It's like, oh boy. <gasps> Ty Dillinger wants to wrestle so bad. So this week, Naomi got beat by Peyton Royce, and this week she's taking on the other half of the Iconics in Billy Kay. She didn't take on Peyton Royce this week. She took her on last week and beat her, you nerd. I'm a nerd. And Billy Kay, <laughs> you know, this whole time, like for years now, I'm like, who does Billy Kay remind me of? But within the first words of her talking down that ramp tonight, she just immediately, it clicked on my head and I just went, oh, what? Oh, so, uh, so, uh, Ross is not gonna be dating me now. Oh, oh. Look at, uh, Vanessa Bayer's depiction of Rachel Green on SNL. You'll see it. I don't know if it's visual or audible or what, but it's bugged me for years and I, uh, tonight that's the raw loaf moment of the night. But at one point in this match, Billy Kay rips, rips on Naomi's hair so hard she rips the collar right out of her hair. That had to have hurt. And uh, I don't know if it's because she ripped her head so hard that she knocked her color out of her hair, but Naomi kind of lost this one and her own self. It was at one point when she had uh, Billy Kay down and Billy Kay kicked her up and Naomi went into the ropes and then she fell in the ropes and she just stood there like this. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she's just standing there like this. And then Peyton Royce gets the kick in when B Billy Kay distracts the ref and she Billy Kay pinned her off the kick and he's just like, why were you doing this? Like she ran over the ropes and just stood there like this. I don't know, but Hopefully next week, Naomi gets a friend or or something and finally gets some revenge on these two. I call it like I see it on the raw loaf. Of course I wanted Naomi to win, but she made a pretty bad mistake and I, she lost because of it. That's the same way life is, children. Deal with it. After the match, we go to Daniel Bryan and Brie Bryan, Brie Bella. They're, they're in the back just like watching SmackDown from last week for some reason, but then they end up in the ring. And they're talking about how The Miz and Maurice made fools of them last week and how that's not fair or right. And Daniel Bryan's correct. And about everything he says about The Miz, The Miz is a coward. That's for sure. I think Daniel Bryan said one of the most impressive things you could say about your wife. He said that Brie last week is a butt kicking, diaper changing, face punching hot mama. Brie Bella, wife of the year. Do you think so? Comments below. Don't say no because she's not your wife. Come on, what are you, four years old? You four year olds? Ooh, and then Andrade San Almas and Zelina Vega come out and interrupt Daniel Bryan right in the middle of his speech. Zelina come, comes, <laughs> Zelina comes out and goes, man, it feels great to be between these two legends. Brie Bella and CN. Ooh, she said Daniel Bryan's a piece of trash. Daniel Bryan goes, you got me. Let's have this match right now. If I would say it here in the back and then nobody comes out and Daniel Bryan goes, oh, I look like a fool. But when I was general manager and then <laughs> Okay, that, that was my attempt at the Raven or whatever that is at Paige's theme and I'm sorry. If I hurt your ears, let me know. I'll write you an apology tweet. But Paige comes out and goes, sorry, I was at the other end of the building. It's hard to run in high heels, which it is. And I know that from experience, but don't ask. Okay, we'll have the match now. And the bell rings and this match starts off and it's back and forth. They're wrestling around. They're having a pretty good match. So we see the Miz and Maurice in the back and they're kind of back there. Um, just talking to each other, watching the match, and then Maurice leaves, and then all of a sudden the Miz's music hits. He starts coming down the ramp, I'm sure, as a distraction to Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan runs out, he's going to attack CN, but CN dodges, and then, of course, Daniel Bryan well, might as well just turn it into a suicide dive, because I'm Daniel Bryan, and he hits the Miz down onto the ground. And after CN throws Daniel Bryan back into the ring, we have a rolling interference number here. Zelina Vega jumps up on the mat when Daniel Bryan gets the yes lock in on Andrade. And then she's distracting the ref and Brie Bella comes around and goes, wow, what are you doing? Ref right now is totally distracted, I guess, by a cat fight on the outside. Maurice comes in and attacks Brie Bella. The Miz is recovered and jumps in and he attacks Daniel Bryan. But the Riz, the Riz, the ref, did see The Miz come in and attack Daniel Bryan, awarding the match to Daniel Bryan after disqualification. And then after the match, it was nothing but a slaughter. 
for Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella. The Miz got the yes lock on Daniel Bryan. And then Maurice gave the French kiss to Brie Bella and they each had to watch each other get beat up. Sad day. Afterwards, we go backstage again and Charlotte's getting interviewed and she's asked what she thinks about Becky and Charlotte's like, you know what? Becky would have done the same thing in my shoes. I would have wanted her to. I would have expected her to. And when I'm done going through Carmella, I'm going to come after Becky, which is what I figured Becky would want. But maybe not. And AJ Styles comes out to the ring and he wants to end it tonight with Joe. And who could blame him? Joe has been harassing his family, and he harasses his family some more tonight. Joe is in the back somewhere. Maybe he wasn't even there. But Joe gets on the phone and calls Wendy. And he's like, hey, what's up? You ready to have that back to school barbecue? Um, better save a play for me. I'm coming by. And this whole time, like, Wendy doesn't hang up. And I'm like, why don't you just hang up? Why are you putting up with this? <laughs> I think that's just me though. And it kind of honestly sounds like someone with Joe just wants a date with Wendy. And maybe she just needs to tell him, I don't love you, Samoa Joe. I don't want to have a date with you. Sometimes all you need to do is tell somebody no. And Samoa Joe seems like a reasonable man. No, he doesn't. That's why I laughed. <laughs>